So you really, you could, uh, I think I think it's, it's kind of it's going back to basics. It's being very clear about what you've done and what you want to do. Actually, so when somebody reads your CV, whether that's a production manager or a talent manager, there's no kind of ambiguity about what you've done. Because basically, when we're crewing up, we have a tick list of things that we want. So you know, if they've got archive, can they sell shoe? Have they got experience of doing this? So we need to kind of look at your CV and go, oh great, yeah, tick 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 tick. And if it's not there, then we might kind of just put it to the side and think somebody else has got that with its more kind of obvious, direct experience. Um, I think also as well, you need to, it needs to be clear how to contact you as well. I mean, the basics, you know, um, needs to be updated regularly so that people aren't going, I know I've got a CV here, but I don't know what they've been doing for the last six months. Um, and I think it just needs to really sell your skills in terms of your achievements so it's easy to read it and you read it and you think wow rather than just read it and think oh right it's like a job description yeah. but it needs to be kind of clear what your role was on that particular production as well so if you're kind of a researcher and then you're kind of sending all these clips that you've had no involvement with whatsoever then that one is slightly misleading yeah. <laughs> Martha covering letters do people bother anymore do, do, do we really care about covering well, letters these days yes they do um, however that covering letter it just gives us um, a little bit of a, a, a flavour, a little bit more of a flavour of, of you. Why are you contacting us? Um, you know, I would always suggest that to, to break it down into the, the three elements, the, the, the opening, um, the, the why, the why. So I'm, I'm, I'm contacting you in response to your ad or is it speculatively? Is it because you've seen um, a show that you're passionate to work on? So the why, I think, putting it in context is really, really, really important. Um, following up with just a, a couple of lines, um, just to summarise your CV, you don't have to repeat everything in your CV, it's already there, but just pulling out a couple of those, like Simon said, those, those key words, those key skills, key achievements or experiences that will just make someone think, yeah, actually, I will go ahead and read their CV as well. Uh, um, First of all, chronology. I think it's really useful for a CV to be chronological, and people usually do that, but occasionally you'll find people who have put their series producer credits and then their directing credits, and then that takes it out of chronological order. I don't find that particularly Very useful. We'll, we'll find the bits that we need, but if you're used to pulling, extrapolating information in, you know, quickly, it's better, I find, if it's in chronological order. Also, sometimes you see people will... Um, separate, say, directing and editing credits, or drama and factual credits. I still think chronological order is the best order. Um, I always am looking for the, obviously, the type of the production, the job that you've had, the job title you've had on that production, the broadcaster, the date, the exec producer on that production, because those, again, are just key bits of information that I am looking for, and if they're not there, then there's, you know, just a bit of a puzzle missing. And having an exec producer or the series producer that you've worked with or the director you've worked with, often, because in the role that I have, and I'm sure it's the same for you guys, you'll know some of these senior names. It's a shorthand to say, OK, I know they've worked with so then I can give them a quick ring. Hi, I'm looking for work, here's my CV, thanks. Great. Which is fine, mm. but actually, what people really like is, you know, I'm a bit, you know, I've, um, I like the app, or this is why I like the app, or this is why my skills tie in with what you're doing. So it's all, it's a bit like an essay in some respects. It's about, I know what you do as a as a company, and I know the kind of skills that you're looking for. These are the kind of skills that I've got, and if I haven't got them, these are the transferable skills that I've got by working on this. So it, it's tying it in, answering those questions for the reader. Actually, this is what I can do for you. This is what I can do for you. These are the skills that I've got. Rather than going from a what can you do for me, what can you do for me, what can you do for me kind of perspective, think about why the employer would want to hire you and tie that into what you're saying. Um, when, when I used to say that I was a self-shooting and self-editing assistant producer for online, people would be like, oh, right, okay, there we go. But actually, <laughs> it's not like that anymore. And the production values for website videos are just as high as some um, TV shows now. Not really. 
you know, I'll make a decision on whether we're seeing somebody based on their CV, based on what I've heard about them or their recommendations. I'm not going to be checking their account. <coughs> I think for I think for me, just on, in terms of Twitter, particularly with junior <coughs> level roles, it's the engagement that you have with people. So, um, and when people are talking about what they've done and what events, and saying there are networking events, it's great for us to see them proactively doing stuff um, out there. Do you know what I mean? That's a nice sign because Jimmy, you, you have your own website yes, which you use. Right. Blog, yeah, has, has that helped you find work? It has. Um, I use my I, I use my blog as kind of like a, a evidence of my CV area. So, so I know quite a few people have you know fluff up their CV. Um, some people can't speak four languages, <laughs> um, but I'll put something on my CV and then back it up with photographs or. Um, a clip or, you know, just to say, look, it's true. Any CV that comes into my inbox, I know it's a value. It might not be immediately something I need, but it might be something I'm going to need in the future. So I will look at it, and I, you know, it might be quite a quick look, but I will look at it, consider it, and then I'm thinking about the state of programming that I'm working across and whether or not that CV is relevant. It, it will definitely go on the database 100%, but I'm also trying to steer it towards different lists that we're putting together for, you know, productions that are in the middle. So everything gets considered. I think that there's a fear that people think that if you're sending a CV either by email um, or to a general, you know, inbox or onto a database, that it doesn't get considered. It absolutely does. And if it, you know, if it helps to send it directly to an email address as opposed to that or onto a database, then I don't mind that. I just cannot get back to every single one. How does it work at ITV?